I'm the president of the Nunantuk of Wit Community Council, and it's an organization that represents approximately 6,000 Southern Inuit. Um, and we have a unique history. We have a, a unique story to tell. It's, it, it's a beautiful story, but it's also one that is infused with a lot of pain and a lot of hurt over, over many generations. But we're also a people that are, that are quite resilient uh, and have, I think, emerged um, and are getting over colonization uh, in our own way. And I think that does impact uh, and does uh, have some bearing on what people are now talking about as indigenous education. Um, well, I don't believe we can talk about indigenous education and really understand it without understanding the cultural context in which uh, that conversation is happening. Uh, and in our particular case, it, it would be about the Southern Inuit in a particular geographic location with a, with a set of traditions and understandings uh, and a culture that is, uh, uh, that in some aspects we share, but in other aspects uh, are unique to us and only to us. So it's important, I think, when we talk about Indigenous education is to contextualize it. And I, I, I often say that, that our culture is a learning culture, is a teaching culture. Um, it has been that way uh, since we have been and since we have existed. Um, indigenous education, if we called it that uh, many years ago, would have been how people were taught the ways of, of hunting and fishing and harvesting of our medicines, uh, of our myths and legends, uh, uh, of our relationships uh, with one another and with others. So, you know, indigenous education or learning has been around for, for as long as we have existed. And uh, I really do believe that we are, uh, a learning culture where we, we, we've always had educators, uh, if I want to put that term on, on, on what some people might call our elders or our knowledge holders. Uh, th th this is really, really important to understand uh, that, that education is not something new or fresh to us. Uh, it is something that is integral to us. It is already a part of our culture. Um, and so the big question is, how do we give expression to that um, in, a, in a modern context, maybe, or in, a, in, a, in the present? And what might that look like in the future? With all of the societal pressures, with all of the systemic issues that, that we've had to deal with uh, as a people. Um, in terms of, uh, uh, of NCC, we've, we, we want to take ownership over our own learnings, our own teachings, over our own story, over our own education. And, and that is fundamental. We, we, we know we have the right. Uh, we know we have the obligation too, and the responsibility uh, to ensure that we have culturally appropriate, relevant uh, ed educational opportunities for our young people. Uh, and, and not just our young people, but f uh, for all segments of our, uh, of our society, the young and the old, um, you know, the, the traditionalists maybe and the non-traditionalists, uh, using those particular terms. Uh, so we have a long history. We are immersed in learning, uh, in educating, and, and it's in, in, and that, I think, is going to serve us well as we design and look at opportunities uh, for further learning uh, in the 21st century and, and maybe for the centuries to come. Uh, one of the ways that we, we have uh, given expression to, to that value we have has been to bring in a program, a, a Southern Inuit Education Program, into the school system, primarily in the high school. Uh, focused on the high school primarily. And, and, and we have initiated a process where we go into the communities and we say, what's important to you? Um, more times than not, the, the education in this particular program is focused on traditional, uh, traditional ways of being, traditional ways that we have expressed ourselves, whether that's through things like making comatics or snowshoes or working with seal skins or preparing game or 
even uh, how we uh, uh, express ourselves on the land and on the water through hunting, through fishing, uh, those types of activities. And what we have, uh, we've given ownership or license to, to, to our own people to say, what is it that you want? What is it that you feel the need uh, to have in this kind of more formalized educational opportunity or program? And that is in, in itself is a learning and a teaching because uh, there, there will come a day when we will be self-governing again. Um, and so when people are asked and when people have the opportunity to, to make decisions and to point the way about their own educational, uh, um, their own educational content and, and how we do it, I think that's, that that's very empowering. I think it motivates people. And that's why we've had such great reaction to, to uh, our educational program in, in, the, in, in the schools. People are willing to participate. We do see some resistance sometimes. Sometimes it's more from the, the system itself and the actors in the system. What I mean, some of the, some of the instructors, the teachers, sometimes the administrators. We do sometimes feel a little friction and tension. Maybe that's not such a bad thing because we can work through some relationships there. Um, but, but people really have embraced this because it's something that's, that, that's important to them. They have expressed that importance. Uh, in the decisions that they have made and and so you know I really feel that the just like the days of old uh, what was important to for us in terms of our learnings in terms of our teachings uh, we made those decisions mm -hmm. and and now we're bringing that kind of uh, process back albeit within a more western type of educational institution but but at least we're bringing some of that that back and making it making it present making it relevant for today and so so that we're really we're, we're really um we love that program um because it connects us it, it talks about our relationship with the land it talks about our relationship to one another uh it talks about our communities uh it it, it, it i believe it motivates our our young people and our older people who many times become the the, the teachers, uh, the instructors uh, uh, in the classroom. And so uh, uh, the classroom would have shifted from, you know, being outdoors to the, you know, into the bush or underwater uh, or, you know, uh, taking, doing all these kinds of activities on the land and on the sea. Um, yes, to, to, to a school setting, to, uh, you know, what is now, I guess, quote unquote, a sort of traditional school setting. So, so we're, we're bridging the gaps between generations. We're, we're bridging knowledge gaps. Uh, the, there is a, a certain sense of uh, camaraderie, if, if, you know, a coming together uh, of various uh, knowledge holders and, and people who want that knowledge in the community. And, and just, just think about like what that means for people. I'm, I'm acknowledging your, 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 you know, your skill, what, what, what you have known and maybe learned through, through generation after generation to generation. We're validating in many ways, you know, you, you as a person, you, us as a society, us as indigenous peoples. And, and likewise, it does the same for, for, the, for the student or the learner, validating that this is important to you. This is what makes you who you are, and therefore validating you in, in many, many ways. Uh, we're saying you're important. We care about you. You're a part of this community. Uh, and I, those types of things in, in the more Western-style education are sometimes lost, where, where a body of knowledge is sometimes almost separate uh, uh, from, from, from the person. Whereas what I think our program does is make, it humanizes the, the, the body of knowledge, first of all, and then how that is, how that is transmitted, um, how one, one transmits and how one receives it. And I, that is, a, that is a, such an important dynamic for indigenous peoples that we don't lose that sense of, of connectedness to one another and that sense of connectedness to what makes us who we are. Um, 
and I'm I'm hoping that in some ways it is also inspiring that um, that that people can s see their value, their family's value, our value as a as a community, uh, as a society, and that uh, it inspires them. Uh, to maintain their connections, to maintain their cultural uh, traditions, to 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 continue to learn, uh, to to continue to to want to uh, um, take what they know and then and then share that uh, with others proudly, um, with confidence. When we're looking at success, at least on this particular program, yes, we can look at outcomes. We can say, what did you learn about hunting and fishing? And what did you learn about, uh, can you now build a, a kamatik or a hamatik? Can you, can you go out now and set some snares? Can you prepare wild foods? Uh, can you make a pair of sealskin mittens? We can sort of measure that, that type of uh, success. We can, you know, in terms of production uh, almost. The, the greater measure for us is, is the participatory nature uh, uh, of the students, of the community, uh, of both the knowledge holder or the instructor, the teacher. We need to focus on the process in order to, I believe, talk about successful, successful programs, successful teachings. And, and so what what I've relayed is, is that it's so important about how we do it, how we introduce a program like this, how we uh, make people aware that they are a part of this process. That in itself is a huge teaching, you know, uh, the, the, this kind of uh, almost dimension between individuality, which, uh, which always existed, and then being a part of the larger community. Um, because there is a little bit of negotiation that goes on about what gets taught in the school. Um, a little bit of negotiation between uh, what what's able to be done in terms of is the instruction there, uh, is this something that's really important? Is it a skill or uh, uh, or something that we're really missing in our community? Or is one thing more important than another? So there's a there's a lot of negotiation goes on, and I think that was always a part a, a very inter, a part of the dynamic of us as an indigenous peoples. You know, um, it might not called it negotiations, but it was it was about our relationships with one another, and so we've been able to bring that, raise that up, in how we have introduced the program, how we've set about the process of, uh, uh, of, of program content, and then how it's uh, delivered. So I think success needs to be measured on many many levels, not just that I can make a really good pair of sealskin mittens and my hands don't freeze uh, this winter, but uh, everything from uh, the, the the choosing of, of working with sealskin, to who gets chosen to 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 teach, to teach, to my choice to be a part of that, um, to to reflecting that in the community and and, and just so so. It's, these different dynamics are at play, I believe, in our program, and, and that's what I really, really appreciated about it. I think it, it, it is aligned with our own values of a, of a, of a community, of a, an indigenous people that, that cares about its, uh, uh, its families, cares about its people, uh, about uh, an organization who has a vision of nurturing our relationship with, with the land and the water and the ice and all those things around us. Um, ultimately, that has a greater influence on who we are than our influence on it. Um, so, you know, success, as you rightfully say, can mean many things to many people. Um, but the reinforcing of these traditional values, of these traditional ways of doing things, um, and then obtaining new new skills, uh, new new uh, new maybe new not new knowledge, but taking all knowledge and making it fresh and relevant. Uh, th these are measurements of success for me. And um, particularly with the young people, it's it, the whole, this whole process is about them also learning about themselves again. And us understanding one another 
through our own eyes, even through our own ears and through our own mouths and our own hands, and not having our story told um, through uh, European males uh, who have dominated uh, and told our story in their way, uh, which has left us marginalized in many uh, regards, who, uh, who have seen us devalued for who we are, what we're about, and, 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 uh, and us as human beings. And so th th there's, there's some real intangibles that, that are important. When we do our Southern Education Program, we are telling our story in our own way um, w and in a way that is meaningful to us and I believe that is more accurate and that is a, a real reflection of the truth and not some other outsider's fantasies or exoticization or or what have you through through their lens so I, you know there's there's something really really valuable in that um and and i do want to make the point though that the the, the let's not let's not value just the program we're bringing in but let's try to understand that that indigenous education is is multifaceted that is deep it's intergenerational um you know it's it's specific as we we talked about a bit uh, uh, to us as a people and, and and some people say my gosh you're teaching all this cultural stuff but we live in culture every single day we live in culture I think what's important is that we decide what cultural aspects are really really important to us as a people and our education system our programs should reflect that should definitely reflect that you know, people pick up a book and they say this is what you must learn it, like it, it's physically separate it's almost it's, it's like it's, it's like an almost intellectual space that uh, that you're trying to now bring from one physical place into another and and uh, indigenous education I don't believe it is it's not like that mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it's just not like that it's very very personal it's very I, I call it humanizing um, it is essentially about who we are and what we're about. Mm -hmm. So, in, and, and the reason why I concentrate on process sometimes is, is, is sometimes content can be a bit foreign, mm -hmm. like the curriculum can be a bit foreign for people. But sometimes that's not the overriding consideration. It's about how it's transmitted and how we take ownership over that mm -hmm. and I think this was really really important mm -hmm. um, you know m maybe one day we'll uh, we will we will be the administrators and the owners and the the teachers and the instructors and, and the students you know uh, um, in our own sort of formalized education system where we develop uh, curriculum content that mm -hmm. when you're talking about economics, you're talking about, yes, other people's story too, but about our own mm -hmm. story so that, so that it becomes more relevant, more alive for us. So, uh, you know, so uh, th th those things, uh, those things to me are crucial. Uh, and and when, when we move to self-governance, uh, which, is, which is where we want to be and where we're going to be, we're going to need our people educated. Uh, you know, yes, in, in, in the traditions, understanding our own story. Yes, in, the, in maybe, you know, in the physics and in, in the, in, you know, in the more, uh, maybe we call them Western science stuff too. Uh, we, we're going to need all of that in order to, to, move, to move forward in, in a way where the health and well-being of our people uh, is foremost and, and, and that we are comfortable in our own skins and uh, we, we are enjoying our own lands and our own waters and our relationship with our lands and our waters is, is, is protected 
and is secure uh, these these are really really important uh, uh, for us and 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 that's it why it's important to get things there's a lot of pressure maybe and a lot of responsibility but i think that it also leads to uh, an enhanced sense of uh, of 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 really being intentional about education, um, indigenous education, and being intentional about how it's done, and that it's that it that it's truly reflective of us and our our people, and uh, yes, our history, but our present and where we would want to go in the future. Obviously, it has a holistic uh, kind of expression for, for at least for me. I mean, it is the body uh, of knowledge, I suppose, or information, data, um, learnings, teaching, story. Uh, it is all of that. I mean, uh, some of it would, would seem to be very old or very traditional. Uh, some of it grounded totally within our own people's understandings and, and uh, oral histories, uh, storytelling, um, uh, in the way we pass traditions from one to the other, in what we do, you know, uh, I mean, that's part of it. That is certainly part of it too. Indigenous education is, is not just a, uh, about teacher instructor uh, with the student, but it's uh, it is about that 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 family dynamic, that community dynamic. I mean, we cannot take uh, uh, that out of the realm of indigenous education, and uh, but neither should we also confine ourselves uh, to that. Um, for our survival going forward, we're going to uh, indigenous education must also involve maybe non-traditional pursuits, uh, in, in in whether that's through you know universities or through uh, colleges and uh, trade schools and and in and in in the present system that we. Uh, you know the, uh, the the secondary school system and the primary school system and stuff like that and things like that. So, you know, it would be it, I think it would be wrong to sort of confine indigenous education. Uh, maybe there, what we should try to do is tease out what is essential to indigenous education. I I, I think it needs to be driven. We are we are the main uh, focus or or actors in the in indigenous education whether it's from um, uh, an ind indigenous knowledge uh, expert's uh, uh, perspective, whether it's from true instruction, or whether it's me as a participant, as a student, whether it's me as a son in the role that I play in my family, or the role that I play as a, as a leader within my community, uh, within Southern Inuit society. So, uh, you know, I think that we have the indigenous education must involve us. I believe that Indigenous education, the process of, of education, should be reflective of some of our of our values, uh, where possible our traditions and our ways of doing um, and learning. Um, I, I believe that there should be an element where if we have the ability, not if we have the ability, we should try to aim to make sure that the content of curriculum or what is being taught is reflective of us and our and our culture. So, and I believe at the end of it, I, indigenous education should be seen to be of some value to the individual, the community, and society of which we're a part. Uh, I specifically mean Southern Inuit society. Uh, yet I un yet I understand we don't you know we're a part of a larger uh, complex of of humanity, and so you. But I think there are a cent there are certain elements that we should look for for time with indigenous education. Uh, we have license to do it. We have the motivation to do it. We have the capability to do it. We are we are pr we are the prime the, the prime movers within 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 that that dynamic that we call education. I suppose indigenous education. So I I believe we need to look at it from. In, in those ways and, and there's a lot of uh, you know that may not sound that clear uh, I think that we need in, instead of looking at indigenous education from a programmatic uh, perspective or from a 
even an institutionalized perspective, we probably could look at it through that lens. Mm -hmm. What are the elements or the, 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 the sort of the, the threads that weave this together to, that, that we call indigenous education? And so I think this, you know, it's about process, it's about content, it's about movers, it's about who does it, when they do it, how it's reflective of our culture. These these kinds of elements, I think, are, are essential. And and, and 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 if we look at it from that perspective, uh, I believe we're going to have a, a, a greater chance of success in, in, in our in our various pursuits around, um, you know, indigenous education, and, and valuing all types of it. Like, like when my dad takes me out and shows me good fishing places, that we should attach a value to that. Mm -hmm. Just like we attach a value to, you know, my brother who goes into a classroom uh, to learn about physics. We should value that too. Um, so this kind of, uh, and there should be a value on it, yes. Mm -hmm. It's got to be meaningful, valuable. Uh, and adds value to, to us as a people. And understanding even like that elders are different mm -hmm. in, di in different cultural contexts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, knowledge holders hold, hold you know, a special place in, 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 in certain societies that they, and it might be different than what's in, a, in another society. You know, so there's, yeah, I, I, certainly, you know, these, the, that we need to look for the threads that make him, that that gives us that gives us a sense of what indigenous education looks like feels like is about mm -hmm. excites people motivates people you know it's uh, uh, helps imagine and oh just you know it's it, it, it's, it, it's certainly to me it's it's it's, it's a massive um maybe undertaking uh, yet it's also one that that holds some of the greatest potential I mean no society really moves without the transmission of of knowledge and information and its traditions and its ways of being and ways of knowing nobody survives if those things don't continue. So mm -hmm. <clears throat> indigenous education is very much about our own survival. Ten years, maybe give us a little bit longer, but you know, I, yeah, but yeah, it's, a part of our, it's a part of our vision for self-governance mm -hmm. is that uh, uh, we, we control our own uh, formalized education system. Mm -hmm. uh, we have more control over our own informal education system. What I talk about is you know, we we must have the freedom to be able to to teach our people the traditions and the ways of being, like we have for for generation after generation. Um, we we sometimes regulation laws inhibit uh, indigenous education, indigenous learning, uh, indigenous knowledge transfer, and so because anything that separates us. From our land, from our waters, from our ice, from our uh, from from what's around us, also separates us from the ability to 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 learn, to transmit, to <coughs> know ourselves in some ways. And so, yeah, we want uh, part of our vision is that uh, uh, we will have control over our own all forms of. Uh, uh, our ways of knowing and being in that kind of, through that lens of education. And um, yeah, if that means at the end of the day that, you know, the, the, the schools are run by us, that uh, we understand the type of instructions that's being given, hopefully by our own people, that our learners are our own people, not exclusively, but obviously, that 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 opportunity is there for our people to go to our own school. So I'm talking about more of an informalized kind of educational structure going forward. And then yes, uh, uh, emphasizing what's so beautiful about us, what is so important about us, what is so significant about us, uh, through our own traditions and ways of uh, ways of educating. 
Uh, I, I can't see how, how to be totally effective, maybe, we, we'll, we'll need both. So we need barriers to come down when it comes to many of these forms of, of, educa of education. And and that and, and part of bringing those some some of those barriers down and increasing opportunity <coughs> is through the exercise of self government. You know, we we will need uh, partnerships and cooperation from various uh, other levels of government. Uh, that is without a doubt. We'll we'll need willing partners within. I think what we have now is an educational uh, system. Uh, we will need the the obviously the the. Our own people, uh, motivated. Uh, we need to build our own ca capacities and capabilities. Uh, we need to be able to say to our people that 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 we can do this uh, um, for ourselves uh, in our way, in our time, in our place. Uh, you know, it, it sounds like a lot, and it is a lot. Uh, but 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 we're gonna we're, we're gonna need our own people. We're gonna need obviously we're gonna need our own people. Without them, then uh, none of this is possible. Um, and we're gonna need our communities, uh, you know, uh, uh, to support uh, initiatives like like we talked about. Uh, and we and we need the other system to understand the other systems that the Western systems to understand us. Uh, and and, and 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 to help us reduce those barriers and again like i say increase opportunity and we're going to need financial resources human resources all of these things are are, are in in arms, any kind of educational system i mean it's important it, it, we know what's sort of required sort of the basics but but again the we have to go back it is us it is us, and some in some regards, all I'm saying to uh, to uh, others is just get out of our way. It's not a very difficult task for them. Just get out of our way, and um, uh, that journey will be uh, a much more fulfilling one. And they've made their own castles, and they live in them, and they and they like where they're they're at, and their little you know thrones um and uh you know i believe the great inroads are being made uh you know to sort of say to people just get out of the way uh be a helping hand uh maybe we'll join hands and walk on this journey for part of the way ourselves uh you know we'll do it together in part we'll do it ourselves in part uh, uh but but it will take some uh, some some cooperation for sure from other levels of government